I think back to San Diego Comic-Con when we were doing a panel and we were just setting up and you know, that monk chanting started. The audience just went nuts. Sitting at the panel thinking like, yeah, wow, we've got some really iconic music on our hands. That music was very, very key to a lot of the emotion of the game and a lot of people's memories of the game. You see a still from it and you hear the music or you hear the music and you see yourself playing the game back in that day. I didn't want to lose sight of that. I wanted the music to speak for itself and just give it um, the red carpet love letter and bring all the resources that we could bear to bringing it back. I really wanted to take what I had learned on Legends and to work with a partner that I had just had great success with in Pure Mind and Paul Lipson. I started formulating my plan of how to approach it. Halo is really near and dear to my heart. Shipping the original audio as it was when they were doing so much work on remastering the visuals wasn't going to cut it. And this was the challenge. We wanted to maintain our reverence and DNA of the original score, but we did need to extend. What we wanted to do was enhance what was there and bring to life with modern production techniques and vastly increased resources over the original. There's a lot of choices out there, but I was a big proponent of Skywalker. They have tailored everything to the pursuit of capturing an orchestra. Skywalker is a great place to record, first of all, because we have a fantastic staff, but also the room is a wonderful sounding room that can be tuned to accommodate any kind of music. To me, it just represents the absolute state of the art, and it's a perfect partnership for Halo Anniversary. If you like the way music was spotted in the original at a particular point, it's going to be the exact same piece. It's just going to be done with a 75-piece orchestra at Skywalker Sound. The guys did a great job on reorchestrating the original work. There was no pre-existing MIDI audio files to work with, and all we had was literally the original in-game file. We had to meticulously listen and transcribe every note. You're starting from something that's already finished, and something that's iconic, something that's beloved. There's a lot of things that are exact, and there's a lot of things that are adaptations and in the spirit of the original. Synthesis was all done on gear that was available in 2000 and 2001. We actually have a couple of guys on the team who are encyclopedic in their knowledge of old gear. They've been able to go back in, listen to what's there, find the exact synth, the exact patch, tune it to exactly how it sounds, and then re-perform it for this. The power of an orchestra and the way scores are being composed now has really raised the level of expectation because it's much more of a real, tangible, visceral experience than it was in the past. At the heart of the music and at the heart of the story is Marty O'Donnell's original creation and it's, it's very respectful of that, but yet it still sounds new. You do have the option in the menu to just play the game to that original soundtrack, so if you do want to hear that music exactly the same as it was 10 years ago, you can still do that. We've got fans making this music, which means that when we are adapting this music, we're doing it from the standpoint of we play it, and we've been playing it for years, and we're just going to apply our sensibility as both a fan and as artists.